Hi there. So, uh, someone asked me a couple questions about the kingdom, um, which, you know, we take some of this stuff for granted, but it's all spelled out in the scripture. Um, we know that the church will reign for a thousand years on the earth. And we know that from the book of Revelation, that we are kings and priests and we will reign on earth. And those who partake of the first resurrection will reign for a thousand years. So there's a period of time called the Millennial Kingdom, and the reason it's called the Millennium is because for a thousand years we know that Satan is bound, and for a thousand years we reign on Earth. And the question that someone asked was, well, who do we reign over? And that is really uh, a big subject. And she also asked, what would the kingdom be like? You know, um, okay, so the last seven years of time that had been set aside that we call Daniel's 70th week. Um, and we call it that because Daniel prophesied in chapter 9, Daniel 9, that there were 70 weeks of years set aside for Israel. And we know 69 of those weeks passed and ended, as he prophesied, with the uh, cutting off of Messiah, or the execution of Messiah, but not for himself. And then uh, the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. The temple and the city were destroyed. And that was prophesied as well. And we know that, or we believe that the Antichrist, the prince who shall come, will come from the people that destroyed the city, which is where we get the idea of a revived Roman Empire. Um, now, uh, then there's another, that's 69 weeks, and that ended. And then there's this parenthesis of time, and the prince that shall come will define the 70th week, which is a final seven-year period. And that seven-year period is uh, marked by its midpoint, in which this guy who has 13 titles in the New Testament and 33 in the Old Testament, the seed of the serpent, the son of perdition, the Antichrist, the man of sin, will establish himself as the center of worship on of a global empire the last empire of man and he is satan's seed and he is coming with all power and lying signs and wonders if possible he could even deceive the elect right and he will exalt himself above all that is called god and all that is worshiped so that he sits in the temple of god declaring that he is god so the Apostle Paul talked about that. John talked about that. And that is what Jesus calls the abomination of desolation. And he talks about that in Matthew 24. It's the peak trigger um, event in the uh, Matthew 24 where he talks about the signs of his coming. He says, when you therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, let him who reads understand, then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains, because then shall be great tribulation unlike anything that's ever happened in the history of the world. And that period of time is described in the book of Revelation specifically as 1260 days, three and a half years time and time and half a times which is two years plus a half a year and that period of time is a specific set aside period called the time of jacob's trouble the great tribulation when the wrath of god is poured out and that wrath is triggered by this beast man who embodies the final world empire and it's an empire of rebellion against God, knowing open rebellion against God where they worship the dragon. It's all very radical. Well, during that time, there is a remnant of Israel. And according to Zechariah, it's a third of the population of Israel that will be will survive a great holocaust. The uh, seed of the woman, the people of Israel will be persecuted by the nations and persecuted by the Antichrist. And two-thirds of them will be wiped out, but one-third will be brought through fire, through a refining fire, and will escape 
they'll be counted worthy to escape, right? And they will escape to the mountains because they will heed the words of Jesus. They will know that Jesus, they will have a revelation that Christ is the Messiah. And then, not only that, but they will meet him in Basra. The Lord himself will appear to them. And Zechariah says it beautifully, that he will pour out upon them, the house of David, and uh, the spirit of grace and supplications, and they will see me who they have pierced. This is in uh, Zechariah 12. They will see me who they have pierced and mourn for him as one mourns for a firstborn, and they will be wailing, and each one will be wailing in their own families of every tribe, seeing him who they've pierced. And they'll ask him, what are these wounds that you received in your hands? And he'll say, these are they which I was wounded in the house of my friends. This is all in Zechariah 12 through 14. And that will be the most glorious reunion in the history of the world, the most bitter, sweet reunion. And it's typified by Joseph when his brothers, who threw him in the pit, come to Egypt for food and he's in charge and he reveals his identity to him and they all bowed before him and wept and he forgave them and he said what god uh, with the devil planned for bad you know god turned for good to save many people and that's what he'll tell israel because we know from paul that the mystery is that israel was cut off so that the gentiles could be grafted in they were partially blinded so that god could have mercy on us but now that the Gentiles are turning away from the goodness of God and rejecting the gospel, it will turn back to Israel and they'll be grafted back in and Israel, all Israel will be saved. There will be a remnant, a group of people, literal Israelites, who will be saved, reconciled to Jesus Christ. They will be uh, refined in the fire of the tribulation and then he'll pour out his spirit on them and fulfill his promise to make a new covenant with them based on his blood and put his spirit in them and give them a heart of flesh and take away the heart of stone and write his law in their inward parts and in their minds and make them a priesthood which and then he will fulfill all of the promises in the old testament all the covenants concerning the davidic kingdom that he promised to the fathers and Jesus, when he came, Romans says that he came as a minister to the circumcision, that is the Jews, to confirm the promises to the fathers. And he preached what? The kingdom is at hand. Why was the kingdom at hand? Because he was there. Now the kingdom was suspended because they rejected it and were partially blinded. And we entered the age of the church. And now at the close of the age of the church, it turns back to Israel. So the purpose of Israel, the purpose of the last seven years, and especially those last three and a half years, is the salvation of Israel to bring them into the status of being a blessing to the nations and to establish the Davidic throne and put Christ on it. So right now he's seated on his father's throne in heaven, but then he will take the throne of David. He will repossess the earth. He will dispossess the earth of its enemies. And that's what Revelation 5 is all about when he takes that book, the lamb, who the, there's no one worthy to take the book out of the hand of the one seated on the throne. Seven seals on the backside and on the uh, uh, front and back. And he's able to open the seals because he has prevailed. And he is the lion of the tribe of Judah and he's the lamb of God. And he paid the price and is worthy to take the book and that's what he's doing that book is a title deed to the planet earth and starting from the minute he starts opening those seals he begins a process of judging and dispossessing the earth of his enemies so that he can take possession of it on behalf of his people israel so there will be a remnant saved of jewish people who will be reconciled to their messiah and then go as mortals to populate the earth. Now, before that happens, our, uh, the church will be raised up in resurrection. Those who are dead in Christ will be raised first, and we who are alive will remain. We'll be caught up together to meet them in the air. Okay, And we, our presence here is the restrainer that holds back the mystery of iniquity from being fully, fully unleashed, unleashed, sorry, so that the man of sin can be revealed. 
And when he's revealed the world who received not the love of the truth, um, that they would be saved, but took pleasure in unrighteousness, will be delivered by God himself over to strong delusion so that they will believe the lie, what the Bible calls the lie. And that lie is all tied up with this person who exalted himself above God, all that is called God. And Satan will be cast out of heaven, we know, at the midpoint of the tribulation. Michael will stand up in heaven. And Satan and his angels will be cast down and with great wrath because their time is short. And they will be unleashed to do things now that uh, that, that they aren't unable to do now. And not only that, but in Revelation 9, the abyss will be opened up. Not only are the angels cast out of heaven, but the abyss is opened up. And that abyss is where, according to Jude and Peter, the fallen angels who interfered with the sons of men before the flood are held in captivity in chains under great darkness until the day of judgment. And they are going to be let out led by someone called Abaddon. And Abaddon is the same as Apollyon in the Greek, who is the son of Zeus, a Nephilim, uh, a mer, um, uh, you know, if you look at the Gr Greek lore, Zeus took a human wife and had an offspring called uh, Apollos. And that is just an echo all the way back to Babel, where Nimrod is a type of Zeus. And his wife, Semiramis, had a child, Tammuz. And that is the origin of the mother-child worship in all of the mystery religions, including Catholicism. That is not Christ. That's Tammuz, an imposter seed of the woman. And he is really the seed of the serpent. And he is going to sit on that throne. Somehow, the whatever this person is, lived once and will rise again out of the abyss and that's what the mystery religions celebrate actually this is a long story i don't want to get into all that but they are really into this idea that uh tammuz or who is the incarnation of osiris or the incarnation of uh i'm sorry uh nimrod um who died and is resurrected embodied in tammuz that he's going to be resurrected again and that's their man of sin they're really looking forward to this this is really what they believe um, and we're talking about the rulers of this world who are united in their council to throw off the bands of Christ, of the Lord and his anointed. In Psalm 2, remember, the kings of the earth take counsel together. Let us cast off their bands. Let us uh, destroy their yoke. You know, But he who sits in the heavens shall laugh. Yet have I set my holy king on the hill in holy hill in Zion. So anyway, um, I guess I got I'm on a tangent. Um, but... The point is, is that we have a lot of drama left to unfold in front of us. And the church will be resurrected before that happens. And that's what Paul says in Romans 11, that if the casting off of Israel was the riches of the Gentiles, what shall be their reconciliation but the resurrection from the dead? And in that resurrection, in that first resurrection, we will be raised as kings and priests with a heavenly authority. But there will also be Old Testament saints that are raised to reign in Israel, including David and including Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. And remember, Jesus talked about how people would see Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob sitting down in the kingdom, but they would be out in the outer darkness. Well, that's what he's talking about. He's talking about a literal resurrection where the graves are opened and they enjoy their kingdom on earth. So there will be Israel who is saved during the time of Jacob's trouble and enters as mortals. But there will also be a resurrection of the Old Testament saints who will reign over them or rule with them. And Israel will enjoy an exalted status among the nations. And the Bible tells us that the, the, this, through several earthquakes, there will be a reconfiguration of the whole land so that the mountains are brought low and Israel Mount Zion will be the highest peak on the earth. It'll be higher than Everest. And that's where the law will go forth. That's where the king will sit. That's where the nations will stream during the kingdom in this exalted place. Um, and when that happens, there will be a water that goes forth from this place and heals the land and renews it. And so there will be a time of paradise on earth as the curse is partially lifted. And we know things like that the 
child will be 100 years old and that he'll play in the cockatrice's den and not be harmed and the wolf will lie with the lamb and there will be peace in the animal kingdom and men will once again have dominion over the earth just like in Eden. And there will be mortals that populate that um, kingdom. And that is... Uh, there that's that's all clearly spelled out now the nations as well will populate the kingdom because if you remember matthew 25 when the lord comes back he separates the sheep and the goats nations during a time of judgment where he sets the one on the left and the one on the right and it's based on their treatment of israel his brethren during the time of the tribulation and those who visited them when they were sick and and are visited them in prison and clothed them and fed them he said, you've done this to the least of my brother and you've done it unto me. Enter into the kingdom which has been prepared for you from the foundation of the world. And they will go into the kingdom as mortals, apparently, and populate it. And we know that there are nations in the kingdom. And the Old Testament mentions which ones and what they'll be doing. Um, you know, that they'll be expected to come up to Israel for the feasts. And that if they're not, they'll be judged with uh, no rain and stuff like that. There will be disciplines during the millennium. And there will be some sort of feast system established as a memorial. There will be a temple during the millennium that's described in Ezekiel uh, 38 or 30, 39, I guess. 40? Maybe it's been a while. Ezekiel 40. And uh, there will be um, a priesthood to tend it and everything. The Lord will be there. Um, and then we, as the king's priests who are in resurrection, will rule over cities, I guess, in the nations. And yet our home will be the new city, Jerusalem. So somehow we'll be able to go back and forth. And I mean, you know, there's some of it that's left uh, that you got to dig out. But what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put a whole bunch of verses. Um, I don't have time to look into all this, but um, I grabbed uh, from Lewis Sperry Schaefer's book, Major Bible Themes. He has a whole section on prophecy for israel that describes the conditions of the millennium and i'm just going to throw those verses into um, the description and let you check them out and hopefully they'll be a blessing to you all right uh hopefully this answered some questions